Hey guys and welcome to the show. So while this may look like some sort of weird Tim Burton-esque kind of game, I don't even know if you can call this a game, this actually isn't really a game per se, it's just me demonstrating a specific concept and that being the closest object to some other object. So in this case, the mouse, which is this little pointer, is going to be pointing to and selecting a target of one of these apples that is the closest one. So if I just leave this here in the middle, you'll see it'll change depending on how close a specific type of object is to it. So before we begin, just remember that if you'd like to see more really cool videos like this, subscribe to my channel right now. If you do it, you won't forget. Hit that bell notification icon so that you can see when strange things and tutorials just like this one come about. So there's a lot about this project as it stands that doesn't really have anything to do with closest enemies. You know, that's such as the, the controller that spawns the the apples and um, how the cursor gets replaced with that pointer. I'm gonna run you through the code, but we're not actually gonna type it out uh, together because that's gonna to take too long. So I have a room over here, room world. It has the pointer, which is pointing to the right, and it has this question mark object, which is a controller. That controller simply has a create event, which randomizes the seed, and then creates an instance of an apple at a random place so long as there's less than 12 apples on the screen at one time. So that's to just seed the room with some of these apples. Um, also note these apples are off screen by 80 pixels, which is wider than the height of the apple. So we won't see it um, pop into existence. They'll sort of fall towards the ground. The hand just follows the cursor, simple as that. We can actually, I think in the create event, we set the cursor to none. We can actually instead say window, Ah, sorry, it's cursor sprite equals SPR hand. So now that should actually work better. We won't need to track it in the step. Great. Great. And then we can actually just give this none. Perfect. Okay, cool. We're getting there. So let's go ahead and delete that uh, step event. We didn't really need it. So next, let's take a look at the apple. In the create, we randomize we set the direction to point down such that when we give it a speed, it'll start falling. And we give it a random uh, value for the angle. We can use this to rotate in the step event you'll see here in the image angle. It rotates on that angle. And also we're saying that if it empties, well, it goes outside the room, you can destroy the instance. You could also use one of these other outside room events if you want, but that's gonna kind of conflict with which specific place out of the room, because remember it spawns outside of the room and we don't want it to continually destroy itself and get created in that sort of infinite loop cycle. So this gives us more control. So that is that. I think the first thing we wanna do is sort out that hand. You know, now that we've got it over here, we actually want it to do some rotating. So firstly, um, I'm gonna set the image angle to equal to minus 270. So I think it's pointing up. We're gonna think about our range. Let's say 250 pixels. So this is how far it's gonna be detecting that something's close to it. And when we're dealing with rotation, we need a rotation speed. So that to three to give us the smooth rotations. Then the step event, because it's gonna be continuously saying, here's a step, who's close to me, you know, run through that code. Then here's another step, who's close to me then. So what we're gonna say is that with all the apples, with all the apples, let's deselect any apple that is selected. And I'm gonna be using a variable called target so let's actually go and go to the apple. Let's go to the event here, target equals false. <clears throat> so it's not the target when it starts and every step it's gonna be saying none of the apples are the target. Then we're gonna be using instance nearest. To get the instance that's the closest and some logic here, we're gonna say, well, if target, well, it's actually if distance to target, distance to object target, so target's a reference to one of these apples, is less than range, then we're gonna say uh, target dot target, well, we actually let's rename this to closest apple, that's much better. So if the distance to the closest apple is less than range, then the closest apple's target is gonna be true. We wanna 
smoothly point our um, cursor towards it. Point uh, direction. Here we're going to say x, y, target dot x, target dot y. I want to say image angle. This is the smooth rotation plus equals sine degrees to radians. Yeah, there it is. Point direction minus image angle. And I need another one of those. Times that by rotation speed. Is this going to go away? Yeah. Then direction equals image angle. Just like that. So that should, let's see, closest, get new closest apple, if it's really close, like close within our range, set its target to true, because it was false, remember, it's false for everyone and also false when they create it, so it's doubly false. But if it is within range, it's going to be true. And we're going to smoothly rotate target x, target y, image angles, degrees to radians. Very good. Um, so that's good. So now the problem is, if I play this, nothing's really going to happen. You know, the... Oh, we got an error already. Uh, target not set before reading it. Target X, target Y. Let's see what's wrong. Oh, whoopsie. This is supposed to be closest double. Yeah, let's run that again. Ah, uh, okay. I think I see one of the problems of actually setting the cursor to, to the sprite itself. I don't think we can interact with it that way. It seems to be the case. Hold on. Let's go back to... Back to the hand, if we set the sprite up, and we actually go into here, comment that out. Let's go back to our step event, whoopsie. Let's just say x equals mouse, x, y equals mouse, y. I have a sneaking suspicion that when I put this together, when I was playing around with it, that there was a reason why I didn't just set the, the cursor up to the mouse. Yes, okay, cool. So if you set the sprite, um, well, if you set the cursor to a sprite, it, it won't allow you to manipulate and rotate and all the cool stuff. So, so unfortunately, yes, you have to do it this way, um, where you set the the cursor to nothing, and then you set the sprite here manually, and you tell it every step to just update to the coordinates of the mouse. So in this case here, we can see the mouse is indeed pointing at the closest apple. Very neat. Um, which means actually that these apples have the property called target, which their toggling is true or false depending how close they are to our mouse but we want that to be more interactive. We've actually got a sprite that's a crosshair, which means that if the if the apple is the target, we want to show this crosshair on top because that'll look really cool. So back to the apple. Uh, let's actually stop this. Let's create a draw event. We are going to say draw self. And I'm going to say, well, if I'm the target, if this apple's the target, then let's draw sprite, I and mean, we don't have to create a, a crosshair object. We can just overlay. We can just overlay this on top of the apple itself. Um, what are these? Subimage zero, right there in the middle of the center, and I think these are all centered. Yes. Okay. Let's play it now. Let's see if it's more interactive. Wow! Check that out. Just like the uh, the demo. And the apples are regenerating. I mean, I say regenerate. They're actually just destroying themselves. And because of our controller, it says, oh, we have fewer than 12 apples that spawn another one randomly at the top. And that's what creates this apple rain effect, just like that. And um, you, I suppose you can use that closest closest uh, well, distance to object function on, on, on literally anything. Like I say, it's most widely used for tower defense because you can then say, oh, if, if I'm... If I'm a tower, you know, alongside this lane, and if an enemy is is close to my lane, and perhaps I have some sort of range uh, ability, and if the enemy is closer to me and that is within that range, then I can start shooting at him, you know, prevent him from getting to that goal. So if you match this up with some sort of way to to actually target just in front of him, then you've got yourself a pretty sweet tower defense game. So hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. As always, the project files are in the description. If you have any cool ideas, let me know. If you like this channel and want to support the things I do, please check out my Patreon campaign. You can get videos just like this a couple days uh, sooner than everyone else, which is quite exciting. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.